Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Gimel discusses when you have a lot of brachas going on on one cup of wine, what is the proper order? We'll talk about Matzah Shabbos, which is Yom Tov. What is the order of Yain Kiddush, uh, Havdalah, and Bari Mari Ha'esh? And the Gemara will have uh, very many opinions on that subject. Then the Gemara will go into a few stories of incidents that happened with Chachamim, and it will bring us to the Allah of so the proper order in Havdalah. And Berchas Hamazon, we'll talk about whether you have to make a bracha on Berchas Hamazon cups of, on the cup of wine that goes with Berchas Hamazon or not. We'll also get into the um, sugya of how you say Havdalah exactly. All these come out of the stories which will be brought in this Gemara following up on the subject. So the Gemara's first discussion is what is the proper order when you're saying uh, Havdalah and Kiddush on Matzah Shabbos, which is Yom Tov. So you have four brachas you have to say. You have to say the Bar Priya Gafen, that's Yayin. You also have to say Kiddush and Havdalah. And you also have to say Bore Maori Ha'esh, which is what we call Ner. So Rav says, you say Yayin, then Kiddush, and then Ner and Havdalah. Shemuel says, Yayin, then Ner Havdalah, then Kiddush. Now they both agree that wine goes first because that's the Tadr, that's the more common bracha. And they, all, they also agree that Ner and Havdalah go together. But Rav says you should do Kiddush before Ner and Avdala because you want to show that you love the mitzvah. You don't want to get rid of Shabbos before you bring any Yom Tov. So first do Kiddush and Yom Tov and then take out Shabbos. Shmuel says, no, you want to do Havdala together with Ner, of course, before Kiddush because, as the Gemara brings a mashal later in the name of Yeshua ben Hanania, when you have a king departing and a prince arriving, you first escort the king out, and only then you go to b- greet the prince who's arriving. So when Shabbos is leaving, first you escort Shabbos out with Avdala, and then you go greet Yom Tov. Now, third opinion here is Rabba. Rabba says you actually do uh, Havdala before Kiddush, but you switch the order. You do Ner after Havdala. Instead of uh, Ner before Havdala, you do Ner after Havdala, and the reason for that is that he wants to separate between Havdala and Kiddush. He doesn't want them too close together. Um, because that minimizes the power of the Kiddush if you're doing Havdalah. So therefore, you switch the Ner to be afterwards. Levi says, no, you change the order completely. You don't do Yayin first. You don't worry about Tadir V'Sha'enei Tadir. You want to uh, have the Bracha on the wine be between the Kiddush and the Havdalah because you want it to apply to the Kiddush and the Havdalah. If it's all the way before one and, and it's if it's before both of them, then the last one, the Kiddush or the Havdalah, is too far from the wine. So the bracha on the Yayin has to be between the Kiddush and the Havdalah, and he also holds that the um, Kiddush should go first. Now the Rabbanan say it's Kiddush, Yayin, then Ner and Havdalah. He also says that you separate between the Kiddush and the Havdalah, but he says why should you do Yayin after Ner, do Yayin before Ner. And the Mar Breder Rabbana says you do Ner, Kiddush, then Yayin and Havdalah. Also, he wants Yayin in between, and he switches out the Ner to be first. Marta says in the name of Rabbi Yeshua, it should be Ner, Yayin, Havdalah, and then Kiddush. Okay, the Gemara says that Shmuel's father sent to Rabbi, Rabbi, please teach us what is the proper order. And he said, uh, Rabbi Shmuel said, Rabbi Shmuel by Rabbi Yaisi said the name of his father, the name of Rabbi Shmuel that's Ner, Havdalah, then Yayin, and then Kiddush. Okay. Says the Gemara, the Mashal of Rabbi Yeshua ben Chanania about the king and the mm, prince. Now the Gemara says, what's Talach? How do we paskin? So the Gemara says, well, if you look at it, the machok is between Abaye and Rava as to where you put the Shechayanu, the Zman. But they both agree that the correct order is Yayin, Kiddush, Ner, Havdalah, as far as those four. Um, like we've seen earlier, Yayin first because it's Tadr V'Shenei Tadir, Kiddush before Havdalah, and then Ner and Havdalah go together in their usual order, and first Ner and then Havdalah. Where do you put in Zman? So Abaye says you put Zman between the Kiddush and the Ner. So it's Yayin, Kiddush, Zman, Ner, Havdalah. And the reason is that Zman is really part of Kiddush. You're saying a bracha on the time, on the specialness of the day. Rav says, no, listen, uh, Shekhinah doesn't require a cup of wine at all. You can say Shekhinah when you're walking in the street. You don't need to be over a cup. Therefore, it's going to be last because it's not really negated to the cup of wine that you're holding. And therefore, the order is Yakin Ahaz. The word says that's the Halacha, Yakin Ahaz, Yayin, Kiddush, Ner, Havdalah. And only then Zman. Okay, now the Gemara brings a couple of incidents that occurred and various different topics about the orders of things. So the first one is about the order of Havdalah, which you have to figure out the order of Havdalah, Bissamim, and Ner. 
And they're talking about when there's also Berchas Amazin involved. So the Gemara says like this. The Gemara says that uh, Rav Huna by Yehuda went to the house of Rava. It was Moshe Shabbos. They brought him a cup of wine to do Havdalah. Uh, and he said, the order that he said was B'samim, then Bari Amari Ha'esh, and uh, I guess Havdalah afterwards, which is what we do. So he asked him, why did you do B'samim before Bari Amari Ha'esh? Is the Mechokas between Meshavah and Meshelah? What the proper order is when you have to do Berchus Amazin in there as well. But everybody agrees that B'samim is after Bari Amari Ha'esh. The Machlokas have is as follows. They both say that Ner is the first thing, Bari Amari is first, and Havdalah is last. In the middle, you have Berchus Amazon and Psalmim. So according to Beishamai, it's Berchus Amazon first and then Psalmim. According to Beishelah, it's Psalmim first and then Berchus Amazon. But everybody agrees that Ner is first, so Ner has to be before Psalmim. How come you do Psalmim before Ner? So Rabbi answered, you're right, but that is only Rabbi Meir's version of that Machlokas. Rabbi Yehuda says that was not what the Machlokas was. Machlokas was as follows. Everybody agrees Havdalah is first, and everybody agrees Berchus Amazon it, uh, everybody agrees Havdalah is last, and everybody agrees Berchus Amazon is first. The focus between Bissel and Meshamai was what is the proper order of Bissamim and uh, Barimari Ha'esh? That Beishamai said you first do Barimari Ha'esh and afterwards Bissamim. Bissel said you first do Bissamim and afterwards Barimari Ha'esh. And we pass like Bissel according to this version, which is Yehuda's version, and therefore that's what I did. I did first Bissamim and then Barimari Ha'esh. Says of Yechanan, that is Taka the Halacha, like Bissel according to Rabbi Yehuda. Okay, now the Gemara brings another story, which is going to interrupt with two other stories. Then we'll go back to the rest of this first story. The story is as follows. Rabbi Yaakov Bar Abba went to the house of Rava, and it was Shabbos. And they did the Suda together. Shabbos, Suda, Shabbos morning. And he saw that Rava made a bracha hagafen in the beginning of the meal. And when it came time to bench, he did bracha samazon. And then he made another bracha hagafen on the cup that he benched on, on the cup of bracha samazon. He finished benching. He said, another very priya hagafen. And he drank it. So he said, why two very priya hagafens? So he said, because what do you mean? When we were in the house of the Reish Galusa, we used to eat there. That's what we did. We used to have, say uh, hagafen uh, t- twice. Once on Kiddush and once on, on the bracha for um, so he said, you can't bring a proof. In the house of the Rish Galusa, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if he's going to give you a second cup of wine or not. So there, we had to end, we automatically ended our uh, focus. We ended our thoughts. We ended our relationship with the bracha. Because we didn't know if it was going to be another cup. And then when they brought another cup, it required a new bracha. But here, this is your house. You have the cup of wine sitting there right in front of you the whole time. Well, you have to say another bracha. So he said, I'll tell you the reason. The reason is, like, the Talmidim of Rav. And now we bring our uh, first story. The Talmidim of Rav, Rav Bruna and Rav Hananel, two Talmidim of Rav, were sitting in a suda, and serving them was none other than Rav Yeba Saba. So they said to him, Havlon Venevich, please bring us a cup of wine so that we can bench. And then they changed their mind. They said, you know what, bring us a cup of wine that we're going to drink. We're not ready to bench yet. So he said, aha, once you said we're ready to bench, you already lost your bracha. That's already has a chadas. You've, all, you've already canceled your drinking and your eating, and therefore you have to make a new bracha. So what you see from here is, is that even just saying we're ready to bench takes off your bracha. You have to make a new bracha. So certainly me, who I benched already, and I want to drink the cup of wine of the benching. After the benching, I have to say a new bracha on it. Now the Gemara brings another story here before it gets back to the original story. And this story is a story of three people who are sitting and eating. And again, their servant, their waiter was a Talmud Chacham, was a Meimer, Marzuch, and Ravashi. were sitting together, and serving them was Ravacha Bredirava. So what did they do? So each one of the three Talmud Chacham who was sitting by the Suda had a different thing that he did with his cups of wine. A Meimer said a bracha every time he took a drink. He said a new bracha. Marv Zotra said a bracha on the first cup and on the last cup after Berch Zamozin. Rav Ashi said only on the first cup and not anything else. So Rav Acha Bar Rava, who was serving them, said, what am I supposed to do? I see three different things here. So Amemar said, you shouldn't learn from me. I changed my mind every time. I said, this is my last tip. I'm not going to drink anything else. And then I changed my mind, so I had to make a new bracha. Uh, Marzutra said, well, I, I, the reason I said uh, bracha on the first cup and on the cup for the benching was because I passed on like Talmide Rav, that if you uh, are ready to bench, you lose the bracha, you have to say a new one. And Rav Ashi said, we don't pass on like the Talmidim of Rav, and my proof is as follows, when Yom Tov falls on Matzah Shabbos, you say a bracha of Kiddush and a bracha of Dal on the same cup of wine, there's only one Agafen, you don't say two separate ones, obviously it doesn't require 
two hagafins for two different mitzvahs. So Gemara says, what kind of proof is that? That's not a good proof. There, he's in one drinking session, but Rav's Tamidim we're referring to where he's planning on stopping the drink. He stops the meal. Therefore, you have to start a new drinking uh, session. You have to make a new bracha hagafin. That's not a proof at all. Anyway, the Gemara goes back to the original story where uh, we had visiting Rava. We had Rav Yaakov Bar Abba. So the Gemara says that um, after they finished the meal, eventually Shabbos ended. It was time for Havdalah. So what happened was that the servant in the house went and he lit a torch. Um, he took a torch and he lit it from the candle. So he asked Rava, Rav Yaakov asked Rava, why do you have to light a torch? You already have a candle. What's that for? I understand that's for Havdalah, but why don't you just use the candle that's burning already? So he said, first of all, I didn't tell him to do it. He did it himself. He said, eh, that's not a reason. Obviously, he knows this is what he's supposed to do. He's a servant in your house. He knows this is what you do. So he said, do you, so he answered, he said, do you not hold of the Allah that you're supposed to use a torch with many f- wicks for Havdalah? That's the mitzvah minam mufchor. You, should, you shouldn't rely on just one candle if you could use a torch. Okay, going further. He said the bracha on Havdalah. He said, Just like we do. He said four things that blessed is Hashem who separates between the holy and the uh, mundane, between the light and the dark, between Jews and the nations, and between the seventh day and the days of creation. So he said, Why do you have to say four things? Rav Yehuda says in the name of Rav. Somebody says Havdalah. Uh, you could just say, you don't have to say anything else. That's what um, Rav Yehuda Hanasi's Havdalah was. So he said, well, there's a uh, b'risa of Rav Yelazar, name of Rav Elishia, who says that somebody who wants to say Havdalah should say no less than three Havdalahs and no more than seven Havdalahs. There's seven different things mentioned. The Gemara will explain on the next half what the seven are. But it should be at least three and no more than seven. So he said, well, you didn't do three or seven, you did four. He said, no, 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 the last one doesn't count. The last one where I said, that was just to be me'ein ha'chasima. The Allah is when you say a long bracha that ends with another baracha ta'ashem, like for example, where any bracha which ends with a, any long bracha which starts with a baracha and ends with another baracha at the end. So near the end, just before the baracha at the end, you should say something which is similar to what the bracha is. So here I'm ending off, just before that, I say to put those two things together. Now, the Gemara quotes this subject in full, where it says it's a machok between Rabbi Yehud, the name of Shmuel, and the people from Pompadisa. Just before the bracha ends, do you have to say something similar to the end of the bracha or to the original, the beginning of what the bracha is? So the Gemara says, what kind of machok is that? It's both the same. You started off a mavdu ben kajachol, you're ending off a mavdu ben kajachol. Uh, what's the difference? The one says that the difference is when you're saying Havdalah between Shabbos and Yom Tov, and there you're saying Amavdu ben Kodesh the Kodesh. So do you have to end off just before that? Do you have, do you have to say Ben Yem Ashvi the Sheish as you may? Do you have to end off Ben Shabbos? Do you have to end off Ben Kedusha Shabbos the Kedusha Yom Tov Havdalta, which is similar to Amavdu ben Kodesh the Kodesh? Do you not? Could you just end off like you did in the beginning of the bracha Amavdu ben Kodesh? Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzhak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.